Hello and welcome to Too Many Movies, the podcast where we discuss DVDs, Blu-rays, and even the occasional VHS tape. I'm your host, Hal, and today we're just going back to basics. So since the last three episodes were about Halloween movies exclusively, I thought it'd be nice to pull it back a little bit and uh, talk about some other movies. But seeing as we're still in the month of October, I'm going to stick to mostly horror-esque movies. Uh... So, like I said, we were talking a lot about Halloween. Let's talk about something that isn't Halloween. Let's talk about a recent horror movie. Uh, It's called Bodies, Bodies, and Hey, More Bodies. Um, No, I'm just kidding. It's Bodies uh, to the Third Degree. No. It's Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. The new A24 horror movie that looked uh, terrible, but people were saying was actually pretty good, it turned out. Um... I mean, I still disagree, but hey, it wasn't as bad as maybe the trailers made it out to be. So, I remember for months there was like trailers would play for this movie, and I remember just thinking to myself, oh, it just looks like another one of those terrible modern horror movie, stupid, like, just, just... just adjective negative adjectives filled my brain every time I saw a trailer for this movie. That that's the the short of it. And I mean, a lot of people I follow who I like, and a lot of people I just in general seem to really like this movie. They were saying, "Hey, it's actually pretty good." So, you know, I'm not one to be uh, intentionally going against the grain, but. You know, I was very skeptical of that. And, I mean, after watching it all the way through, I'm still skeptical, you know? (laughs) And like I said, like I just said, I don't intentionally try to be different, you know? Like, I'm just being honest. And even though a lot of people seem to really like this movie, I'm not one of those people. I, I just don't see what makes this movie so special. I understand the praise uh after hearing some of it and after watching it but i'm still not there i still just don't see it as anything other than just another horror movie for the pile you know there's just nothing here that really impresses me in any way so let let me let me start with some positives i mean it is shot pretty well i think the cinematography is good I think the music is actually a plus. I actually do really like the music. I mean, soundtrack-wise, when it plays a lot of modern songs, I'm like, all right, I can't get into this. I'm not much of a modern music kind of guy. But the score itself, when it was a little more uh, vague and ambient, and it it was a little more vague techno, I was like, all right, I can get into this. And it actually did match the tent scenes really well. Like, the music was actually very well done i will say for what it was i liked it it was pretty nice the acting was actually pretty good i must say i mean i can't say any performances were like you know really grabbed me or like anything was really that impressive i'm just like yeah no they were decent actors everybody did a good job for what they were given and i think that kind of ties into a criticism i have and that is I don't like any of these characters. And I know there's going to be people being like, oh, you're not supposed to. They're all supposed to be, like, moronic assholes to each other. It's like, okay, I don't know. I still don't like them. So the the kind of draw to this movie is that it's basically helming itself as, like, a Gen Z horror movie where it's like, oh, a bunch of Gen Zers or Zoomers or whoever the just a bunch of 20 somethings get together during a hurricane and they play they just hang out and whatnot in this giant mansion and they're all just a bunch of snobby rich kids and one by one they each get killed off while they're playing this game called bodies 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 and i mean it's a simple enough uh story i will say but the problem is uh it's a little too simple like the draw of this movie is that just a bunch of dumb teenagers are playing a game and 
one of them dies every other scene. It's like, okay, that's about it. And I guess the meat of the movie is these characters and their personalities. And all right, I can see that. But like, unfortunately, the personalities are just garbage. Like, these are horrible, horrible people. Like, I, as a young person, I definitely know people like this. And to be honest, I'm glad I don't hang out with those people. Like, it's just, these are just like the most shallow and narcissistic people. And they just say the dumbest shit. And I feel like that's intentional. A lot of this movie does feel intentionally mean-spirited, especially towards these kinds of characters. And that's where it's kind of odd, because the movie also is sort of a satire on this, on these kinds of characters, which is weird. So a lot of what these characters are saying are a lot of buzzwords you'd see thrown on Twitter. There's a lot of gaslighting. There's a lot of toxic. There's a lot of... I'm an ally. There's this, that, and the other thing. You're silencing me. Like, just Gen Z talk or Twitter talk. You know, just whatever you want to classify those as, it's a lot. And a lot of these characters say these things a lot in this movie. And you're kind of thinking, like, okay, is this satirical or is this for real? Because that's where I kind of get confused. Am I supposed to? to not like these characters because they're unlikable and written to be that way? Or do I not like these characters because this is written by a bunch of boomers who don't understand how these characters and kinds of people actually talk like? It's it's like one of those weird things. And it, it kind of reminds me of a couple years ago, there was that movie Spree, you know, that Joe Keery movie where he was playing a Twitch streamer that went on a killing spree. And the weird thing about that movie is, well, one, I didn't like it, and people in general seem to like it. But also it's like, okay, did I not like it because it wasn't very well made? Or did I not like it because I just don't like seeing these things in movies? And I think with this movie, I mean... If everybody seems to like it, and I'm one of the people in the minority that doesn't like it, maybe it is just that. Maybe this is a case of, I really just don't like hearing Gen Z talk in movies when, you know, I go to the movies to escape. Like, it, like I watch movies as a form of escapism, so like, to hear people whine and bitch and talk about gaslighting and toxicity and validation and shit i would hear on the internet otherwise it's just like all right well why am i here then like what am i getting out of this and i guess like oh you're supposed to get out of it like oh it's these dumb teenagers and they're you know dying so you're supposed to get enjoyment out of that it's like all right well i don't hate these kinds of people enough to want to see them die and, like, these characters all have, like, drug problems. Like, one of the characters has, like, a serious drug problem, and that's a plot point in the movie. And it's just like, oh, God, like, do I really want to see this character die? Like, she has a serious drug problem. Am I supposed to root against her? It's like, it, where's the tone here? Like, what am I supposed to get out of this movie? Or am I getting exactly what I'm supposed to be getting? In which case, okay, I don't like that I'm getting that. It's a really confusing movie, and a lot of it is probably on me, and that's fine. Like, obviously, a lot of people seem to like this movie. They seem to get a lot out of it. I just don't. I really just don't see it as that great. I think it's very annoying. I think it has some decent stuff to it, and it's not as bad as, like, other horror movies this year especially. Yeah. Really, when you get down to it, compared to a lot of horror movies that I've seen this year, especially with the horror movies I was just watching for the last three episodes, and just this year in general with stuff like Five Cream, Texas Chainsaw, Fresh, like these are, those are terrible, terrible horror movies. Some of the worst I've seen in recent years. Whereas this is just, it's fine. It's really nothing to ride home about. I am more personally annoyed by it because of all like the Gen Z talk and I grow very tired of hearing that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, 
it is one of the better horror movies. It does have a nice ending. I like how at the end, spoiler alert, there really was no killer. It was just them acting like a bunch of dumbasses because the first guy to die, Pete Davidson, accidentally sliced his neck open with a sword. It's like, okay, that's funny. That's a funny reveal. And I think it does make sense for this kind of movie. It's like, okay, it does its job well. So, like, yeah, is it a good movie? I mean, I'm not one to say. I just find it kind of annoying. So, like, I guess from a general standpoint, sure, it does its job well. But from a personal standpoint, I really can't stand this kind of uh, talk in movies. And I'm just confused by what I'm supposed to get out of it. So I just, I, it's not, it's, it's a movie not made for me. This is clearly not something that I was meant to enjoy or watch. So you know what? That's fine. If you like this movie, awesome. I'm happy for you. I'm glad you like it. I don't. So if you can't tell, is this a movie worth keeping, worth adding to the collection? Absolutely not. Would I watch it again? Not out of my own volition. I would rather watch a lot of other stuff over this. So if it's ever on TV and I have nothing else to watch, sure, I'll watch it. But like, honestly, if I could go the rest of my life without ever watching it, yeah, I, no harm, no foul. All right, that's bodies, bodies, and more bodies. Let's move on to uh, a different horror uh, movie from this year. So before I get into today's DVD, I wanted to just quickly talk about uh, another uh, horror thing from this year, that being the new MCU product, Werewolf by Night. So this has been making the rounds on Letterboxd uh, with people saying it's actually really good, and people are praising it and saying it's actually one of the best things to come out of the MCU in some time. And it's directed by Michael Giacchino, who, I mean, for those of you who don't know, which I don't, I can't imagine why you wouldn't. He's a, he is a film composer more often than not. And he's made, uh, scores for, you know, the Batman, a lot of Pixar, Star Wars, Rogue One. Oh, he did the music for Lightyear. Oh, in any case, he did the score for Incredibles. He's all right in my book. Um, but anyway, as I've been saying, people have been really liking this. And unfortunately, this is another case of I don't get it. I I really went, I went in with an open mind. So I really expected to like this because unlike Bodies, 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 like this actually had the making for something I would actually like. It's directed by someone who I greatly respect in the film industry. It's entirely in black and white. It takes place in the MCU, but Neri has a thing to do with the rest of the MCU in general. And it's 55 minutes long. Like, that's awesome. Like, And it's about werewolves, and it's horror-based. It's like, okay, this sounds kind of cool. This sounds like it would be a really neat... Uh, small thing to enjoy from the mcu you know as i've been saying for ever at this point i'm not really a fan of the mcu anymore like there's a lot that they do that just pisses me off like so much so that i've just given up on trying to watch everything in the franchise anymore like i still haven't watched miss marvel or she hulk at all because why the fuck would i like why would i just hate watch something for hours and hours and hours and get absolutely nothing out of them it's like i'm done with the shows man just i'll stick with the movies if it confuses me then so be it i'd rather be confused than annoyed in any case i mean 55 minutes like that's a breeze to get through like so of course i was gonna watch werewolf by night unfortunately I'm just not buying it, guys. I really don't see how this is any different from Marvel's usual schlock. Is it the worst? No, absolutely not. It does have its fair share of cool aspects to it. I like that it's in black and white. I like how it's trying to be, like, it's trying to present itself as a monster movie from the 40s. So I like that extra detail. Unfortunately... 
it's not shot like a monster movie from the 40s like it's still shot like a marvel product it has like the sweeping camera it has the overabundance of cgi yes it uses sets and some practical effects but overall there is a lot of cgi going into this okay and i want to make it very clear because i've had people in the comment section of my review for this on letterboxd saying that oh but they used practical effects like that me like as if that means anything like oh this uses practical effects it's like I really feel like ever since Force Awakens, when J.J. Abrams was bragging about using mostly practical effects in that movie, that we've kind of had this idea in our head that CGI bad, practical effects good. And to an extent, there is some truth to that. I feel like, you know, with YouTubers complaining about bad CGI from things like the prequels and a lot of early 2000s stuff, we've kind of gotten it into our heads that if a movie uses as little cgi as possible then that's a good thing and like sure but only to an extent like just because a movie uses mostly practical effects does not mean it's going to be any good rise of skywalker uses a lot of practical effects that doesn't really reflect the quality of the movie i'm afraid so yeah are there practical effects in werewolf by night yes but that doesn't automatically make it good. And in fact, there's still a lot of CGI in this movie. It's actually quite horrible looking. Like it's some of the worst I've seen so far in the MCU. It's just getting worse and worse. Now, it doesn't look as bad, but guess what? That's because they put that black and white filter over it. Yeah, I'm sure they try and, you know pass it off as an artistic vision of oh we wanted it to look like a movie from the 40s but like like i said it's not shot like a movie from the 40s so it doesn't feel like that it genuinely just feels like they shot it like a marvel movie and then at the last minute just slapped on this black and white filter to like cover up the fact that the cgi isn't that great so they can be like oh maybe we can kind of pass it off and i mean it's working people seem to love this movie and call it a different mcu product but like I've been saying, it's not. It's just the same bullshit. These characters are so boring. They're just awesome, badass people that just don't care to be there. Like, they act like they're so cool. And then, you know, th they're just not in any danger until the plot says so. And then they're in some danger. But then at the end, they're not in any danger because they're the main characters. And though they weren't they weren't in any danger so don't worry you don't have to worry about them actually being in any high stake situation it's oh god like come on man you had the opportunity to do something simple and you just make it another marvel product you have like i said these boring ass characters you have these overabundant explanations of the lore that's just like oh god i don't care i don't care about this bloodstone family or whatever this macguffin they use like what is this like the 30,000th macguffin in the marvel universe like how many macguffins are in this fucking universe like jesus just can't something just not be a world ending thing can it just be like a normal thing and apparently some people say there's like gore in this finally even though like i don't know there was gore in other mcu movies Remember when Andy Serkis got his hand cut off in Age of Ultron? Like, yeah, some guy gets his hand cut off here. But again, it's shot in like the most PG-13 way possible. Like you barely see it. And then you see just CGI blood squibs every once in a while. It's like, that's not edgy. That's just lame. Like, I'd rather you not show any blood. Like, if you have to use CGI blood, I'd rather you just not use any blood in general. Because... It looks bad and it looks lame and it feels like you're just putting it in there to seem more edgy to be like, oh, we can kind of get away with it. It's like, no, I'd rather you actually get away with it or not at all. Like, just don't even next time. Obviously, I will say, again, it's not the worst thing ever. It is fine. It is just like inoffensive and whatever. It's, it's a Marvel product. Like, say what you will about Marvel. Like, do they have their hits? Absolutely. Do they have their misses? 
undoubtedly. But they have also a wide variety of just fine, meh, whatever products. Like, just stuff that I really don't care one way or the other. It's not the worst thing ever. It's nothing that great. Um... And maybe that's just on me for having any sort of expectations that this would be any different. It's like, it it was fine, but it wasn't that great. And I really don't see myself watching it again anytime soon, which is really a shame because it really had the potential to be something that I would really like. But as far as I'm concerned, the best thing in the MCU post Endgame is still No Way Home. That's the way it has been for two years now. That's probably the way it's going to be forever. In any case, this is a Disney Plus exclusive, so unfortunately I can never own it again. But in terms of whether I would watch it again, mm, not really. I really just would rather watch those old 1940s monster movies again. So, yeah. Okay, that's both uh, modern recent releases that i wanted to talk about let's talk about a dvd in my collection to decide whether i want to keep it or not um unfortunately it's another disappointment this is a this is a this is a whole episode of just disappointments and really that's on me for having any sort of expectations but i really wanted to like this movie or i really wanted to laugh at this movie so this is a movie called Frankenfish, and it's, uh, as the co- cover suggests, it says, from the director of Spawn, you know, that awful Spawn movie that came out in 97. Yeah, the, this apparently this movie wants to credit him for that. It's like, of all the movies this guy's been a part of, uh, Spawn. You know what he was... You know what this guy, the director, was actually? He used to be a special effects guy, and he did. He was part of the special effects team that worked on Jurassic Park. Why didn't you use Jurassic Park? You know, an actual good movie, but whatever. In any case, this cover is what gravitated me towards this movie. So I don't remember how I got it, but, I mean, just by looking at the cover of this, it's it looks hilarious. It's these two people in the water, and behind them is this awful CGI shark fish sea creature thing and the title of the movie is just frankenfish like this sounds like a b-movie schlock fest in the making that i should adore i mean come on it looks so funny but it's not so unfortunately or fortunately depending on how you look at it this movie tries a little too hard which is really weird because you know when it comes to movies that have no chance in being good you kind of want them to try their very best but in my experience sometimes a failure is just as entertaining as a success like yeah it's really cool when a movie you have zero expectations for actually does exceed expectations like I'm still surprised that Top Gun Maverick was any good. I'm still surprised No Way Home was any good. Frankenfish, I'm surprised tried a little. But unfortunately, like, I would have rather it not try. I wanted it to fail. I wanted it to be funny. Like, that's what I want. Like, I want something like Halloween 5 or Halloween Resurrection. Like, I want something to be such a gigantic failure, it's funny. Like, that's what I want. That's why I love those movies. They're such failures that it's hilarious. This is a failure in that it could have been worse, and I probably would have found it entertaining. But, you know, it's shot okay-like. It has decent acting. Sometimes there's a really cool idea. It's like, all right, but where's the funny? Like, I want the funny. Like, this movie just takes itself a little too seriously, so then I'm left thinking, like, all right, there's nothing for me to chew on here. Like, there's no funny. It's just a boring movie at that point. So, basically, it's in the swamps of Nolens or Louisiana, or however they say it down there. I don't know. I'm, I'm not from the South. In any case, there's a bunch of killings, and they send in this guy... Uh, to go investigate it 
and they find out that it's a killer genetically infused fish or fishes there's like two of them i guess i don't know in any case hijinks ensue there's a group of people they're trapped on houseboats they're trying to fight off these monsters and it's it's fine like that's honestly the most disappointing aspect it's like i wanted this to be funny i wanted bad acting i wanted bad worse special effects the special effects were bad but they could have been worse man they could have been hilariously worse uh, it's just uh, i mean again there are some funny parts there's a part where uh, a guy shoots a fish in the head and then he shoots like the giant fish in the head he rips out its heart he cooks the heart and then he eats it and then the other fish jumps on and eats that guy it's like okay that's kind of funny there's a scene where there's this stoner guy and he's looking into the water he's like hey i think i see something and then he gets his entire head chopped off it's like okay like that's kind of funny i will say the part that shocked me the most was one of the main characters gets their head blown off so there's a scene so like one of the main characters is this woman she's like a wildlife uh researcher or whatever i don't even remember what she does she's some scientist lady whatever in any case she's like uh trying to formulate a plan and in the background because the other guy got eaten by the giant fish he and he left the grill on his uh houseboat is like sinking and uh catching on fire and he dropped his gun and it's near this like hot fire and so the scientist lady as she's trying to formulate a plan she starts explaining something and the fire causes the gun to go off and it completely shoots her and blows off an entire side of her face and then she's dead it's like holy shit like i thought you were one of the two main characters but no you just die off like that it's like it really caught me off guard i'm like holy shit but it's like i wanted more of that more shockingly hilarious moments like that but there weren't any it was just kind of standard it was very very standard and that to me again is really disappointing with a movie as ridiculously titled as frankenfish and with a ridiculously hilarious cover like this that's just photoshopped weirdly i want more funny i really do like sure i could probably give it props for not being as bad as it could have been but i mean i just wanted something more entertaining it's like give me something on the same lines as halloween resurrection give me something on the same lines as i don't know countless fucking wheel night movies that i've watched over the year it's like or just in general just funny bad movies in general just give me something along those lines something like little italy bud the chud just wacky wacky movies but no this decided to play it safe and i'm afraid that just won't fly in my opinion i really wanted to like this i really wanted it to be hilariously bad i really wanted it to be a fine addition to my collection but it just wasn't that it disappointed me in that it was too good or trying too hard so unfortunately frank and fish will not be joining the ranks of my so bad it's good collection nor will it be joining the ranks of my g collection in general so goodbye frank and fish all right i'd say that about does it thank you all for watching thank you all for listening thanks for just listening to this episode of disappointments i'm sorry that this was what the episode turned into i really would have liked to have talked about movies i was excited about but you know unfortunately i just chose the worst movies to talk about coming back from a huge marathon like the halloween marathon was um i mean i still got some uh movies up my sleeves i want to talk about in fact hopefully next episode is a big one that I won't reveal anything, I just want you to know that it's going to be on movies I actually do enjoy, so be on the lookout for that, and uh, yeah, that's it for this episode, so I'll see you all next time. Bye! Yeah.
Yeah.